हेलो एंड अ वॉम वेलकम टू एवरी वन टूडे दिस सेशन इज़ अबाउट हाउ टू ड्रॉ अ डाइग्राम ऑफ कम्प्लीट आइडेंटी फॉर्म मोल सो बिफोर गोइंग इन टू द डाइग्राम लेट्स रिवाइज सम फ्यू इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स रिगार्डिंग द एच मोल सो आइडेंटी फॉर्म मोल इट इज़ अ जेस्टेशनल ट्रोफोब्लास्टिक डिजीज सो देर आर वेरियस डिजीजेज दैट कम अंडर द जी टी डीज लाइक कम्प्लीट एच मोल पार्शल एच मोल देन इन्वेजिव मोल देन कोरियोकार्सिनोमा एंड प्लेसेंटल साइट trophoblastic tumor so these are the various gtds that you should know you should know the names of these gtds and uh, among these for the mbbs this h mole is very very important so in complete hyaty form mole the pathogenesis is the empty ovum it is fertilized by two sperms so the zygote that is formed it is diploid it is important that it is diploid but the difference is that all these chromosomes they are पैटर्नली डिराइव अनलाइक इन अ नॉर्मल जाइगोट वेयर हाफ ऑफ द क्रोमोजोम्स कम फ्रॉम मदर एंड हाफ फ्रॉम फादर बट हेयर ऑल द क्रोमोजोम्स दे आर डिराइव फ्रॉम द फादर एंड ग्रॉसली इन द यूट्रस ऑल ऑफ द कंसेप्टस दैट इज कन्वर्टेड इन टू ग्रेप लाइक वेसिकल्स एंड इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज बंच ऑफ ग्रेप्स अपेरेंस एंड देर इज नो फीटल पार्ट एट ऑल बिकॉज ऑल द क्रोमोजोम्स दे आर पैटर्नली डिराइव सो देर इज नो फॉर्मेशन ऑफ एम्ब्रियो and there is no fetal part uh, so this is a important gross finding in hereditary form mole uh, important point regarding ultrasound is there is a snow storm appearance that is seen in ultrasound again this is important for mcq and viva now the risk of development of corio carcinoma which is a major concern so it is about 2.5% again this is important the risk of malignant transformation in a complete h mole to treat uh suction and evacuation is done and follow up is done by the serum hcg levels which are very much elevated in the hereditary form mole so these are just the high yield points and the detail lecture i have uh, taken earlier and i will add the link in the description of this video so you can go and revise the gtds from there now we come to how to draw the diagram of complete h mole so complete h mole there is the proliferation of chorionic villi and in addition there is hydropic degeneration of the chorionic villi now this is to understand the pathology and how to draw this diagram we should know how how a normal chorionic villi looks like so these villi which are uh, part of the placenta and they are responsible for the transfer of nutrients between the maternal blood and the fetal circulation so these coronic villi on the cut section they are like finger like projections and when we do the sectioning then on the cut section they look like this when you cut it like this then the villi in the cross section they look like this so this is a single villi and you can see the villi they are lined by two epithelium one is known as the cytotrophoblast so the cytotrophoblast these cells are cuboidal in shape so these are the cytotrophoblast and they have a central nucleus and the other cells are syncytial trophoblast so syncytial trophoblast syncytium means multinucleation so these cells are fused together and there is no uh, boundaries in between these cells and there is a syncytium of uh, cells which are showing multiple nuclei so this is a syncytial trophoblast so here here you can see this is a syncytial trophoblast and this is the cytotrophoblast so cytotrophoblast they are just cuboidal in shape and the syncytial cells they are fused so there is no boundary between the cells and you can just see bunch of nucleus and and all this pink is the cytoplasm so this is how a coronic villi looks like and also in the center in their core there are blood vessels so these are vascularized so this is a this is how a normal coronic villi looks like now we come to the h mole so in complete h mole all the villi they are affected while in partial will partial mole some of the villi are affected some are still normal so in we will talk about complete mole so in complete mole what happens these villi again you see these this is the villi and these villi they are lined by the cytotrophoblast again and the syncytial trophoblast but the difference is that here you can see there is proliferation going on so the cytotrophoblast this is seen in multiple layers like this again here you can see there is focal 
trophoblastic proliferation. So cytotrophoblast and syncytiotrophoblast both they are proliferating. So you will draw the villi. The villi you can draw variable size and shape. Generally they are dilated also. And the core, the core shows hydropic degeneration. So you have to draw it, you have to just color it with a light pink pencil to show the hydropic degeneration. And then there are some empty spaces which are known as cisterns. And there is uh, lack of any vascularity in the in the core of the villi. So this you should these points, the three important points are there is proliferation of the trophoblast. So you just draw the multiple layers of cytotrophoblast and syncytiotrophoblast, and you can draw it circumferential and also focal. You can draw. So in complete mold, generally there is circumferential proliferation, and in partial mold there is focal proliferation. And the second point is the core of the villi will not have any blood vessel in the complete mold. So they are completely showing the hydropic degeneration. And because of that, there is also this cistern formation. These are the empty spaces which are seen in the core of the villi. So I will just show you a real image, real microscopic image of a case that I have seen. So in this case, you see that all of these, these are the villi. These are the villi which are like uh, dilated and you can see I have uh, magnified it in the center so here you can see that there is trophoblastic proliferation again there is like here it, it is trophoblastic proliferation so the trophoblast again here there is trophoblastic proliferation so these are the villi which are dilated and in the center you can see these the empty spaces these are the cisterns these are cisterns like this so this is the H and D image, which is showing again the same features that I was telling you. Again, in the higher power, you can see. So this is the space I have delineated by the arrows, and this is all. This is the cistern formation. This empty space, and you can see that the villi they are like very much showing the hydropic degeneration. They are like very much whitish, so they are showing the degeneration, hydropic degeneration. They are edematous, and they are uh, they are not showing any blood vessels. I cannot see any blood vessels in these villi. Again here, no blood vessels. This is another villi with the proliferation. There is this is trophoblastic proliferation and no will no vessels and also these cisterns. So again in this picture, trophoblastic proliferation in here. And here here also there is a circumferential trophoblastic proliferation. And in addition, the cistern formation and hydrobic degeneration. Again, these are the villi. The villi, this is edematous villi. Again, this is edematous villi. See here, this is trophoblastic proliferation. Here also, this I have uh, shown with the magnification. This is also trophoblastic proliferation. So, um, I hope you got the concept of the differentiating features of the villi in a complete mold. So, we have to show trophoblastic proliferation. We have to show dilated villi with hydropic degeneration. And then we have to show the that, that there is no vasculature in that villi. So this is how we will draw the diagram of complete mold. So now let's move to this animation where we'll see how we draw the diagram. Okay. So let's start. So we make villi of variable sizes. We make the lining of the villi by the cytotrophoblast. So you have to draw cuboidal cells. Cuboidal cells means same width and same height. And then <coughs> we show the trophoblastic proliferation. So in some places I have shown the multi-layering as you can see. So we make the nuclei. Then in the core we make it light pink. And we show the empty spaces by you can erase at the center to show the cistern formation. Now this is another villi. Again we make the circumferential proliferation of the trophoblastic cells. Then these are syncytial trophoblast. So where you the place where you draw the syncytial trophoblast, there you just um, uh, make it pink and draw multiple nuclei in that. So that is syncytial trophoblast, which is multinucleated. Again, you uh, color the core and uh, erase at the center to form the cistern. The third will I am making. So again, the proliferation cytotrophoblast and this pink masses. These are syncytial trophoblast. So, this completes the villi. 
so this is simple now uh, it is made now at last we have to do the labeling so we label first of all we label the cistern then we label these villi which are enlarged edematous edematous villi lacking the vascular course so i have not drawn any single vessel in any of the villi then these areas of trophoblastic proliferation you can add cytotrophoblast and syncytio trophoblast syncytio trophoblast means syncytium they are multinucleated without any demarcation of the cell boundary so this is how we make a diagram of hydratiform complete hydratiform mold so this is the completed diagram and i hope this concept is clear and i will paste the link of the gestation trophoblastic disease lecture in the description and i hope it is clear if any query is there you can post the questions in the comment section thank you very much